For the practice with multiply assignment, what you're going to do is go to the assignment, scroll down to the bottom, and open the photo. You need to download this photo, so if you have a download button, you can click on that. I'm going to two-finger tap on the touchpad on my Chromebook, and then I'm going to go save image as. Remember where I save it, so right now it's going to be in the downloads folder, so then I can go ahead and click save. If this pops up, I'm going to just put show in folder so that will be already open, or you can just find it later if you want. Then I'm going to click back to our assignment, scroll up to the top, and click on the link to Pixlr E. There is a Pixlr X, but that is not very similar to Photoshop. So Pixlr is the closest thing that you can get to Photoshop if you're using the E version. It's a good idea to log in. It's a better way to save your work. You can go sign up now, put your school email in, and then your school password. and your country and sign up and then scroll down say that um you don't want updates and go ahead get rid of this i want to save my password and then go ahead and click agree verify your account so go check your email find that code and click verify. So Pixlr E by signing in, you are able to save high quality images and there's a few more functions that you're capable of using. If you don't log in, you won't have that extra access. And you get this upgrade for free because you're a student. And by using your student account, that's how they can verify that you are actually a student. So click on verify. And then now we can go ahead and um, begin. We are on Pixlr E. Um, if for some reason you're not, click on Pixlr E up here. So go ahead and um, instead of create new, because create new will give us a blank template, we want to use that image. So go ahead and go to open image. And then find where you put your image. So I had mine in the downloads folder. and open it on up. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're gonna click on the three dots. So let me do that again, the three dots that are right here. And then we're gonna change the blend mode to multiply. So a lot of different programs have this kind of a blend mode. And we can go ahead and click out of that. It's a good idea to keep this layer locked so that you don't accidentally draw on this layer. We want to draw underneath this layer. So by multiplying it, um, you're able to draw underneath it. So you're going to click on the plus sign, and then you're going to click on empty. And then you want to drag that layer down underneath that background layer. And every layer you work on, you want to make sure that's underneath that background layer. So that background layer is going to stay on top. And then you can play with your brushes and you can play with the paint bucket tool. So we're going to go ahead and play with the brush and I'm going to change the color to anything. Let's see, maybe I'm going to work a little bit on the sky and press OK. And right now my brush is super teeny so I can play with um, these tools up here. I want you to just get used to them. So you have the softness or the fuzziness of the brush. I want it to be a little bit of a larger size just for this practice. I don't want it to take forever. I want the edges to be super blurry because that's going to help me with blending. And I don't want my opacity to be at 100. So when you're trying to blend colors, it's a good idea to take that and lower that. You could have your first layer 100, and then when you're adding other colors on, you can, can change that up. So here I am. I'm going to just um, not be perfect on this because this practice is just you getting used to the tools. But right now we are drawing underneath 
all of, um, so if I go all the way over here, if you see, I'm drawing underneath all of that pin work. So let me undo that. If you wanted to be a little bit more careful on the edges, you can of course make your brush a little bit smaller. So right now it's 100% opacity and I am not really too worried about um, being perfect on this, just playing around with the tools on this one. And then if I wanted to blend uh, a lighter color in there, I change this to whatever lighter color I want and press OK. And then when I'm trying to blend, I'm going to change that opacity so it, so it is more transparent. And then I can just start adding little highlights maybe onto the clouds, um, you know, whatever. So play around with coloring some of this in behind the drawn layer. So again, I'll just show you one more, like grass. Let's see, I'm just going to use that for grass. And I'm, I'm too opaque or I'm too transparent right now. I need to up my opacity. Opacity means solid. Um, so something that's really opaque is very um, non-transparent. So just playing around with this, being very messy, I know. And then choosing another color, whatever. And then changing that opacity. So it's more transparent. I like to use something around in the teens to the 20s and then doing light layers of blending on there. Okay. The other thing that I want you to practice is going to be the paint bucket tool. And so what you do for the paint bucket tool is you're going to, since we don't want to draw on our original image, you're going to select on that image and then you are going to paint bucket tool on a different layer. So let's go ahead and create another layer and I'm gonna just create another empty layer and I'm going to drag that down lower. And then I am going to get my magic wand and I'm going to make sure that I am on that background layer or the, the layer with your ink drawing on it. And I'm going to select whatever it is I'm trying to color in. And then if you hold down the shift button, you can select several different components. Now here it's important that you closed all of your gaps. So this one, the pin kind of ran out. And so if I select here, it's gonna select outside of that. So when you're doing your drawing, you gotta close all of your shapes. The skinny pen tool is the one that is provided to you. So this line right here that you see is one that I drew from the pen tool that's in your kit. This is with a pencil, which is not too ideal because it kind of gives you a little bit of fuzzy edges, but I did go as dark as I could with pencil. And then these are just different markers that I kind of found laying around. And I think that sometimes these thicker markers where you can have thick to thin lines is a little bit better. So keep that in mind for the future. So now I have selected on my top layer and then I am going to start working in the layer underneath. I'm going to, and I'll just use the same color. And where is my paint bucket tool? And I am going to just kind of fill those on in. And then while it's selected, I can go back and I can start blending in highlights and shadows or other colors again using, and so that first layer was completely solid. And then the layer above that I am going to just start blending with my fuzzy brush. Oops, got to change it back to the brush. And I'm going to start adding the detail while I'm already here because I don't want to have to select this layer and come back to it. So I'm just adding a little bit of some other values. I can get darker and darker if I want to by adding more transparent layers or even changing up that color so it's a darker color. So what I want you to do is I want you to just have fun. You're going to just get graded for having attempted stuff on this document. Um, so it's going to be a full credit thing based on you just trying this out. I want you to try drawing or shading, adding the color underneath like I did here, 
and then I want you to attempt using the paint bucket tool. A couple of things to think about when it comes to your future artwork is if you end up shading your artwork in and you don't use pen and ink, well, you can't use a paint bucket tool if you shaded everything in. You also won't be able to really use the paint bucket tool if you have a lot of mark making. And so let me show you what happens when you do that. So right now I have that selected and I don't wanna use it anymore. So I'm gonna go select, deselect. Oh, and then um, there is a little bit of a, a glitch in here. So I'll help you with that in a second because um, you're probably gonna run into this. But um, you're probably not gonna be able to use the paint bucket tool if you shade it in like this. Um, you're probably not going to use the paint bucket tool if you have a lot of mark making because if I take my magic wand and I try to paint bucket tool, let's say this tree, Oops, I'm not on the right layer. Control Z is undo. So I gotta be on the right layer where I'm, where I'm trying to do my selection. If I try to select this, it's not gonna select anything in between all of these little lines. So if you want your final drawing to be heavily based on the paint bucket tool, you gotta think about your mark making. You gotta make sure that your lines are not overlapping or causing other smaller shapes. So if I was to paint bucket tool in here, that might not be bad because none of those lines are overlapping each other. Where here, all these lines are creating its own little individual shapes, making that impossible. So let's say that now I went back to, let me add another layer. And again, I drag it underneath the original. Now let's say I wanted to go back to coloring underneath the image. Now sometimes, see right now, nothing is happening at all. And that's frustrating. You're like, well, why is that happening? And so what you just gotta do is play with the select and then go to select all. And then all of a sudden it starts letting you color in again. So for some reason, it's not letting you color behind your image. Um, just go ahead and go to select and then select all. So then the last thing that you're going to do so let me go ahead and deselect. And I need to save it to turn it in for my grade. So I'm gonna go File, Save. And you are not gonna save it as a PXD, not this one, but your actual artwork we do because that will save all the layers that you're working with. This one's just a practice. Unless you wanna save all the layers, it's fine. But when you're turning it in, I only want a JPEG. I don't wanna to have to open the program to see it. So make sure JPEG is selected, type your name for the file name, and then make it high quality. Always turn this up. I don't know why it goes down to 90 all the, all the time. And go ahead and download it and then attach it and turn it in. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys have fun playing around with the tools. I hope you enjoy it and good luck.